when you read about the history of beer and you think craft beer is a recent phenomenon, it really isn't. It's thousands of years old and, and some of the people who are most relevant and impactful during that whole evolution are the monks, definitely in the medieval period. You can go way back in time. There were people brewing in their homes and there were the monasteries, the Trappists. And if you think back to the Middle Ages, the monasteries were at the forefront of larger scale brewing. So they, they were the modern breweries. They just weren't modern in our sense. When I first started home brewing, some of the beers I started to make were Abbey style beers. I became very interested in them. Generally, out of the Trappist monasteries, you know, they make two beers or they make three beers. It gave brewers a sense that, hey, I can actually do this. You taste all these different types of monastic beers, big ales with a lot of complex esters. Generally, out of Trappist monasteries, people think in terms of a fruitiness from the fermentation, although there's plenty of hot bitterness to balance that, that fruitiness. Of course, we're going to drop some American craft-style hop additions in there. We decided we wanted to use an ingredient called Belgian candy sugar because it gives you that ability to kind of boost the actual potency of the beer without bogging it down. Kind of makes it a bigger ale. This is a riff on high gravity monastic style beers. You want to make a beer that's inspired by that, you need to go to these Trappist monasteries. The monks do not take a vow of silence, but they really appreciate the importance of silence. You have to kind of be on the grounds of the monastery because like we're in city life and it's just noisy, you know, and there'll be sounds of cars and people going by. You go down to the grounds at one of these monasteries, it's like dead silence. In a sense, they've been living by the rule of St. Benedict since 530. That's a long time ago. When you think about the spirit, the word patience, peace, certainly you think in terms of discipline. Those are definitely timeless virtues. It's pretty impressive. What isn't just beer. They don't become monks so they can brew beer. They brew beer so they can sustain themselves as monks. When you start with the structure of seven prayers a day, then everything else works into that. These are a very secluded part of the brewing community. They may be part of a global community, but it's not like these places are Disneyland for beer. It's more like a life of seclusion and very private. You'll have this great juxtaposition of old stained glass, and then you'll have a completely modern brewing vessel or filtration system. Them providing us a sense of hospitality, actually opening up the facilities for us is remarkable and also we feel really grateful that we were given the opportunity. There are people, and generally when you talk to people, you discover uh, how generous they can be. Someone who uh, is very obsessive or excited about beer. We have a term called beer geek. <laughs> you are, I, I, yeah. I, I, I understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, Getting to share a beer with the monks and witnessing and experiencing it was really the culmination of the Abigail. Brewers have always learned about brewing from other brewers, even before they were using thermometers. It's time for us to brew like monks, maybe not act like them, because uh, we're definitely not waking up at four and going to service. 
I think last night we went to bed at four, you know? So we're on kind of a different rhythm because we're never gonna be an authentic Trappist brewery. We don't want to either, but reinterpreting it and reformulating it was the key. What happens when they've been around 50 years? Um, I can't predict that. Only that there'll be somebody making beer. The history, the culture, the inspiration, and now having the opportunity to put this in a six pack of hands. <laughs> I can't wait to share this with them. We're just at the beginning.